Hello friends, I hope you're doing well. So today I'm going to be doing, starting a reading vlog. Um, we're currently painting this wall. You can't actually see a huge difference, but that's why it's a little echo in here because we've moved everything out of, either eat out of the bedroom or like to this side because we're painting this wall and this wall uh, blue with like yellow accents and stuff. Had, this is currently at work. We started this yesterday, uh, yesterday, Friday, today it's Saturday. And originally I wanted to like vlog the whole process because it's just like fun to do makeover stuff. And then also my plan was to read some graphic novels, but I guess I'm feeling more like starting it today. <laughs> um, and I have some graphic novels that I really want to get to. I do have a tendency to like start graphic novels and then not finish them or get interrupted or whatever. And also just like buy a bunch of graphic novels and then never read them. Um, so the two that I'm, I've started are these two, Papaya Salad, which I've been wanting to read for such a long time. And it has the most like beautiful art in the world. The colors and the yeah, art is just amazing. But I'm soon done with this one. And then I started this one, my Aunt is a Monster by Romaina Lee. This one I kind of just started. Romaina Lee has written my favorite graphic novel, The Seance Tea Party, which I just adore. So I want to finish this one. And the other ones that are on my TBR are the new ones that I've gotten. I have a lot of like great graphic novels that are kind of on my backlist. I would love to get to these before they become like less relevant. Boys Weekend. This is a new release. I found about, out about this one uh, when researching like queer horror. And the art is like kind of cute, but it's supposed to be a little horror-y. Really excited about this one also because it's adult. This one is just uh, one I found browsing. I think it's supposed to be queer. It's Grace Needs Space. I don't know anything about this. Just that it looked cute, middle grade. And then very excitingly, we have this one. This is Cost One Night's book too. Uh, read the first one and really loved it. And the second one was recently released. Also queer content. And then this one's just so stunning. Girl Juice by Benji Nate. I love this cover. I love the fact that the spine's a different color. The art just looks beautiful. I haven't read anything by Benji Nate before, but they're like the illustrator of Catboy, which I've seen around. It just has these like square comics, but the covers and art looks amazing. Really excited for this. So those are kind of like an overview of my reading plans. I'm gonna continue painting. I have to finish the second coat of this blue before we do anything else. Also, there's gonna be a giveaway in this video. So stick around for that. <laughs> So if you're new here, and, or you don't remember what the wall looked like before, it is this color essentially, and it's funny because you can barely see a difference on camera, but this is much darker and much more gray. It's like a teal color, and I'm just not a teal curly. Um, and this one is like bright blue. But yeah, I'm gonna take a break now because I need to let everything dry before we start with the yellow. I'm gonna read some comics. I'm gonna have a little fika with a little snack. Wow. Look at all that blue. Noise. And look at all these comics. Tweet. Anyways, let's read. Via Salad is a debut graphic novel by Thai Italian illustrator Elisa Messalari that chronicles the story of her great uncle Sampong, who found himself in Europe on military scholarship on the eve of World War II. A gentle and resolute man in love with books and languages in search of his place in the world, Sampong chronicles his life during the war and falling for his wife, finding humor and joy even as the world changes irrevocably around him. So I finished Papaya Salad. Um, this is just like such a special graphic novel. I think I read like a lot of graphic novels that are all kind of just not the same, but they have like a similar essence. And every now and then there's like a unique graphic novel that just like captures your attention. It's not like nothing else. And Papaya Salad is really that. Like, just the coloring work is just exquisite. Like, all the different layouts that the story is told in is absolutely stunning. The story spans generations, or like the experiences that are so different between generations, but yet have a common understanding between them. And a common understanding of like humanity and what's important and like connecting uh, to like 
your older family members or younger family members. One of us about culture, untold stories, I suppose, stories that are not usually told, especially in the context of such like big events like World War II. Um, this was just great. If I have any critiques, it's that it's like a little bit slow and it's kind of just because it's autobiographical or like a memoir in some way. The story is not made to make you keep reading. So there isn't that much like, it's not told in a way that's like addicting, you know? But I don't really think that's a critique. It's not really supposed to be that. It's supposed to be just like an honest retelling. Um, it's just so beautiful and so cute and amazing. Highly recommend. Um, I guess I'm gonna get started this one now. My Aunt is a Monster, the one I've already started. Another reason why I like uh, Romina Yee's work, I don't know if you can see, but they use like very different forms of structure in their comic. I don't really know what I'm showing you, but yeah, just different storytelling visual formats is what I'm trying to say. And it really resonates with me. So far, this one has been like a little bit harder to get into than her previous book. My Aunt is a Monster by Romina Lee is a middle grade graphic novel following Sophia, whose home burns down in the beginning of the book together with her parents. Sophia thought that being blind meant she would only get to go on adventures through her audiobooks. This all changes when she goes to live with a distant and mysterious aunt, Lord Whimsy, who takes Sophia on the journey of a lifetime. While the reclusive Lord Whimsy stops an old rival from uncovering the truth behind her disappearance, Sophia experiences parts of the world she had only dreamed about. But when an unlikely group of chaotic agents comes after Whimsy, Sophia is forced to confront the adventures head on. For the first time in her life, Sophia is the hero of her own story, and she must do what she can to save the day. And maybe find some friends along the way. So I finished My Aunt is a Monster. This great, complicated for a graphic novel, like the plot and all the characters' backgrounds and stuff, gets kind of like introduced at random points in the story. There's a lot of information and a lot of for like the brain to work on and lay, because it's kind of like written like in middle grade, young adult type of book. The information is just like a lot to hold in your brain all at once, in my opinion. And I feel like I almost would need to like reread it to understand everything that happened, especially like at the end and the conclusion. I was like, I didn't even know the story was building up to this, which makes it less satisfying to actually finish it. And it's a very complicated story. Information got kind of revealed a little conveniently, like right before, you know, something were to happen with this information, we got revealed. So it's like, not as satisfying to watch the plot unfold but i just have so much appreciation for graphic novels that it's like it's really difficult for me to rate it lower than like a 3.5 because it's like years in the making and the art love the art style the way like the pages are com like com com compost composition composition of the pages amazing like the best that i've ever seen it's just really fun to read such creative storytelling and also super unique story. There's no way there's a story anything like this. So that was really fun. Girl Juice by Benji Nate follows four women in their 20s living in an apartment together. Young, introspective Nana, comically hypersexual Bunny, fledgling YouTuber Tula, and designated mom Sadie as they navigate life, love, and the pursuit of a good time. Girl Juice flaunts the glorious, messy, and hilarious self-indulgent day-to-day hijinks of four young women doing the most. Watch them bicker over making rent and come up with creative solutions for getting there. Cringe as they attend an adult prom. Split your inside as they try their hand at camping. Cower as they confront their mommy issues and cheer as they battle inner demons that feed off attention-seeking behavior. I'm like this far through. This is literally so funny. Like, I keep smiling and laughing. The characters in this are super fleshed out. All these, like, four girls are so on point. Like, just, like, I love them as characters. And they're all super unique and come through the page, like, so well. I love the art style. Like, it's just so nice. I just love reading a lot. It makes me super happy. So funny. Oh, my God. So many moments. It's basically structured, like, each page can be one individual comic, but they're 
they also have a storyline throughout them. So it jumps in like scenes from from scene to scene, but they also all make sense together, which I don't think I read before in a super creative, fun storytelling formats. I think I'm gonna savor it a little bit because I can feel that I'm just like burning through and just wanna keep reading. It's just really well done, super inspiring, having so much fun. <laughs> Uh, so funny. Um, really excited about this one. But it's time to make take a break. Um, make dinner soon, I think. It is 8.20. I had a day's ends work in 10 minutes. So I'll do some dishes, make some food. Okay, well, that's Thumber for all of you who are asking. That's Thumber Graham's dog. Hey, guys. It's four o'clock and dark outside, and now you can see the color difference. <laughs> what? Oh, sorry. Bella. Yeah, like my great great grandmother. Exactly. That this is picking my next read. These are some of the. These are the contenders. Some backlisted books. What are the two finalists? The 30 Names of Night and Hard Boiled Wonderland and The End of the World. I'm myself more interested in this one than this one, but I think you would be more interested in this one. But I'm curious about this one, but this will be the pick. Wow, thank you. Welcome. Yeah, you're good, babe. So lyrics are really the best soy latte you've ever had is me. Yeah, <laughs> best soy latte that you ever had. Oh, and me. So it's the next day and here's what's happening. We have mapped out these curves, one that goes here and one that's down there. And we're gonna paint them yellow, including like the inside of the window frame. This part. And the curve was a little bit difficult because also we'll have to like freehand it. I don't know a great way to like make a stencil of it, but that's okay. How did this is at work, so I'm gonna do this myself. I'm definitely the lesser perfectionist of us. I really hope it turns out good. So I'm gonna mix the paint, I'm gonna start painting. It's a little nerve wracking. But I think this is good. It's cool. Let's see what happens. This was so much fun. I really, really enjoyed it. It was like one of the best comics I read in a while. It was just so funny. Five stars, the coloring, the characters, the humor is so good. It takes a lot to make a per person laugh out loud, in my opinion. This book did that. Head recommend Girl Juice. So entertaining. So great. Loved it, loved it, loved it. What do you think of the bedroom so far? It's growing on me. Have you seen it? We've done two layers of yellow, and then we we'll probably have to do a third one. But it's looking pretty cool. I'm getting into it. Okay. 
Do these two colors represent your childhood in Sweden? No. No, I, mean, I don't want to. I don't want anyone to think that. I'm right. trying to not think that. <laughs> You're zooming in so much. What are you, are you zooming into? You have a little eye bigger. So we finished painting the bedroom. Yay! Finally! Oh my god, it took way longer than expected. Actually, it's not true, we haven't finished. We still need to make like the window frame white. But other than that, it's pretty much done. I'm really happy with it. It looks really cozy. I <laughs> can't believe we agreed on something, like a mashup of our two styles, and it became this. I haven't read any comics today, but I think I will pick up Cosmo Nights. Read that for a little bit. Cosmo Nights book two for a little bit while I had to just the dishes. Um, I don't really remember what happened at the end of the first one, so I'm gonna recap it a little bit. Cosmo Nights by Hannah Templer is a sci-fi space opera following Pan. Pan's life used to be very small, work in her dad's body shop, sneak out with her friend Tara to go dancing, and watch the skies for freighter ships. It didn't even matter that Tara was a princess, until one day it very much did matter, and Pan had to say goodbye forever. Years later, when a charismatic pair of off-world gladiators show up on her doorstep, she finds that life may not be as small as she thought. For this ragtag band of space gays, liberation means beating the patriarchy at its own game. On the run and off the galactic grid, Pan discovers the astonishing secrets of her neo-medieval world and the intoxicating possibility of burning it all down. Hello, so I come to interrupt your regular scheduled programming to say that there's a giveaway in this video. Because a long time ago, I said that if I reach 5,000 followers, I'm going to be giving away this book, Mooncakes, by Wendy Shu and Suzanne Walker. Because I accidentally ordered two of it. I stopped doing booktube, essentially, for a little while. And I've just been waiting to be able to make a video where I can give away this book. And I thought uh, reading comics vlog would be like the perfect chance to do a giveaway of this book. And these pride socks. <laughs> <laughs> which are new. Um, I have actually washed them once, but they are completely new. They're very cringe. I also have my own pair of cringe pride socks. All you need to do to enter the giveaway is comment down below your favorite or one of your favorite books of the year. Follow my new personal slash bookish account on Instagram called Wildly Will and share on your story the post that is this giveaway post. And to note, the first two of that are optional, the comment and the, the follow. But you need do need to share the post on your story so that I can know that you've entered and that so that I have a way to contact you if you win these two things, if you want them. This is just to say a thank you to the community for watching me. Um, if you're new or if you're an old, oldie on this channel, just thank you for um, five and a half, which is wild while I was away. Okay, back to the regular schedule for <laughs> Wow, beautiful. Hello, so I don't think I updated you today. Uh, we are cleaning the floors today. Tomorrow, how this is gonna have surgery, so we need to like finish everything before then and make this like a cozy recovering room. I have cleaned half the floor twice, and now I'm on the second half of the other half of the floor. So I have one fourth left. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna try to put as much of the furniture back. Uh, in the right spot. We first moved it to this side and now we've moved all the furniture to this side. Uh, yeah, and these are the floors that I'm cleaning. Wow. Anyways, just, I thought I would update you more. I thought I would talk more about reading, but it hasn't been a lot of time for me to just like sit down and read comic books, but essentially I have to kind of finish this vlog today um, because tomorrow is gonna be a different vibe. 
I still have comics to read. Uh, was I was really enjoying getting back into what's the name? Cosmo Nights yesterday. I forgot it ended on a cliffhanger. It's really really good. It's just it has a little bit of everything. Um, it's so fun, so fun, so queer, so radical, and has like very interesting conversations in it. So, yeah, really enjoying it, but. Also, I'm a little scatterbrained. I'm still drinking coffee. I'm trying to get this room together, clean the floor, but I'm so tired and I feel like I'm gonna blister so bad on my hands tomorrow. Also, it's a mess. I need to also uh, go down with the laundry after I finish this, but I'm gonna take a break after that and so, so like calm myself a little bit. This is gonna be really nice. Ugh, I need it so bad. Oh my God. I'm reading and this far into the book, like halfway, Massive plot twist. Oh my god. Ah, I don't know what to do. Oh my god, I have to keep reading, but like... What's gonna happen now? Holy shit. This book just keeps me like on the edge. I keep wanting to turn the pages. Like it looks thick and it has A4 paper, but like, oh my god, I'm flying through this. This is so good. Okay, because this is the second book, and because I'm getting to the end of the book, I can't, like, say anything about the book, which is so frustrating, but also, you know when you're watching a show or something, and the characters have, like, a moment, and then I feel like it's a very gay thing to be like, now kiss. <laughs> and, like, that happened, there was a moment, I'm like, these two characters, they need to get it on together. Um, and then I turned the page, and they kissed! And I was like, oh my god, I read that right? Oh, it was so satisfying. So cute. Mm. at the end oh my god oh my god how many years am i gonna have to wait for the next one <sighs> boys weekend by mari lepchansky follows newly out trans artist assistant sammy who's invited to an old friend's bachelor weekend in el campo a hedonistic wonderland of a city floating in the Atlantic Ocean's national waters. Think Las Vegas, but with fewer rules. Though she has not identified as a man for over a year, Sammy's colleague buddies haven't quite gotten the message, as evidenced by her formerly closest friend Adam asking her to be his best man. Arriving at the swanky hotel, Sammy immediately questions her decision to come, bad enough that she has to suffer through a torrent of passive-aggressive comments from the groom's pals, all met with zero pushback from supposedly nice guy Adam. But also, she seems to be the only one who's noticed the mysterious cult that's also staying at the hotel. Part satire, part horror, Boys Weekend explores what it's like to exist as a trans femme person in the man's world, the difficulty of maintaining friendships through transition, and the more cold light effects of masculinity, hustle culture, and capitalism. friends so this video is going to be now transitioning from a reading vlog into a reading wrap-up of the comics I finished because life started up again faster than I thought and I decided to just keep reading the comics and so I didn't really vlog that much I hope you're okay with that um, I believe that these books are the ones that I talked about and gave like sort of a review of I have so much fun, oh my god. And then I also want to talk about these three books that I also finished. So this one 
it's a new release, which is really fun when it comes to like comics and stuff. It gets really like sci-fi and also horror-y and just like really out of bounds like it just goes so crazy with what happens at this island the comic style is really fun i really liked it it's probably like um close to a four star i think i probably gave it four stars it does get maybe like a little bit too crazy but i also just appreciated like how wild it was and a lot of like the discourse is like sammy trying to weigh out like is it worth it to be myself be my womanly them self or should I just like kind of act like a bro because everyone sees her as like this man or like how she used to be um and she's like trying to have the conversation with them but also she doesn't know if it's worth it because everyone wants to just like bro out kind of um which is just like funny but also like a really real conversation I think maybe just like the flow of it was a little bit off and because it just got really wild, you have to like really lean into just like having a good time. And it is also gory. And I thought the story worked really well with like with the themes that it was working with. Uh, yeah, I recommend this. It's a great debut. I thought that was excellent. It's also really fun to read like queer adult comics. I want to read more queer adult comics because I almost always just like get really obsessed with, with them in general. And then I also read Grace Needs Space by Benjamin a Willigus Re Abrigo. So this is kind of like a young adult middle grade. It's sci-fi. So this follows Grace who lives on this like spaceport because one of her moms is like a tech there and that's kind of like her whole life. But then she gets to have like a vacation fun with her other mom who works on like a spaceship and she transfers like goods and stuff. So space Grace goes with uh, her other mom, Evelyn, on this like thing that she sees as like a vacation she gets to visit like this other like spaceport and like planet with water and it's like all super wild to her and she has all these adventures in mind but her other mo mom Evelyn is a little bit like kind of doing this in between jobs like she's trying to like keep her job going and Grace is kind of like oh, I just want to have fun and she feels like ignored and not having the adventure that she like hoped and it's very slow and the whole book even though it takes place in space you get to see like all these fun like space stuff that's going on like the illustrations of like the world and the technology and how they like travel and stuff is really really fun and really good and I love that element of it but the story is like actually very contemporary and it's just about Grace relationship with both her moms her like learning a lot about stuff about herself but also relationship with them it was a little bit too slow for me and the conversations in here are very big for like being kind of like a middle grade um, so I would say it's more young adult even though Grace is more like middle grade age because the topics are really complex and I feel like they are presented in also like a fairly complex way. There's no like resolution or like big aha moment, you know, it's more just like contemplating like these feelings that she's going through and like situations and even the relationship between her two moms are kind of like uh, explored at the end with like a very adult conversation. So I guess like as to what audience this is really written for. I'm not really sure, but I really enjoyed it. I gave it 3.5 stars maybe. It's definitely different when it comes to middle grade and sci-fi because it is mostly contemporary and queer, which is fun. So those two books were the last two that I read for this vlog. But I would love to also talk about this one because I read this last month and I'm about to be doing my reading wrap up for like the last 10 books that I read and this is the only comic. So I thought it would make more sense to talk about it uh, with you in a comic video where people might be more interested in specifically comics. So I've been looking for this for a while because I found it somewhere. I think I found it on a Greek comic book store website. It's called Smut Comic Athens The Bed We Share. This is volume two, but it's unrelated to volume one. I also can't find volume one. But then when I also look for this on Goodreads and Storygraph, I can't find it, like it's not on there, which is curious. But then I found it in my local comic book bookstore, which is so wild because I've been like contemplating getting it from this Greek comic book store. Um, this is like a short story collection kind of with all of these like different illustrators, um, comic makers and they follow like um, various people and like their sexual endeavors. But each story is like 
written so that like one person has sex with someone else and then that second person starts off the next comic and then that person has sex with someone else and then the second person starts off the next comic so it's like all these different styles but they're all connected by one character in between each story which I thought was a really fun way of doing like an anthology collection where it's so obvious that all of these creators have like collaborated it's also very queer and free in like how it views like sex and what type of sex they're having but also very different like sexual endeavors uh, it's graphic it's 18 plus but uh, I really enjoyed this I thought it was really fun I love the concept um, I want to read more stuff like this uh, where it's like creative collaborations between many artists in such a fun way and also I enjoyed the smutty element of it but with it being more like realistic in in the style in what was happening you know I recommend this one if you could get your hands on it and you're interested in these type of comics so for the books that I read for this video if I were to give it like an order of how much I enjoyed them uh, this would be it. My least favorite, I guess, is My Aunt is a Monster, but only because I have such high expectations from their other book, I guess, which is a little unfair. Grace Needs Space, um, Papaya Salad, Boys Weekend, Cosmo Nights, and Girl Juice. Girl Juice was just, just so fun. I had so much fun with it, but also Cosmo Nights is just as well, like, up there just because of the Aha, uh -huh, the plot is like amazing and with it like connecting to the previous book and I can't wait to read the next one and my thoughts are just like fangirling over it but I think the, both of these are excellent but I enjoyed all of these great comics. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it even though it's transitioned from a uh, reading vlog into a wrap up. If you have any recommendations for queer adult comics, let me know. If you read any of these, tell me your thoughts on them. Um, I wish you all an amazing, brilliant day, and I'll talk to you soon. Boy.